111,111,111 is a palindrome. It's the same forward and backwards. Now that's a little boring because it's all ones, but if we square it, it becomes a new palindrome. That's right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 is an incredible palindromic number. There are others. 121 is a palindrome, and when you square it, it's also a palindrome. And these are just the first examples on my list of really cool, amazing math facts you probably never learned in school. Every good geometry student knows the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees, right? Not always. Certainly that's true if we're talking about Euclidean geometry, but there are other types of geometries. Specifically, spherical geometry is a good representation for our planet. Spherical geometry is the study of figures on the surface of a sphere, much like the Earth. Lines are replaced with great circles, which are the largest circles that can be drawn on the sphere's surface. The shortest distance between two points on a sphere is along a great circle connecting those points. When dealing with triangles in spherical geometry, we find the angles of triangles adding up to more than 180 degrees. This is kind of understood better if you consider the curvature of the Earth or a sphere. As weird as that might be, there's an even weirder non-Euclidean geometry known as hyperbolic geometry. In this geometry, you guessed it, the angles of a triangle add up to less than 180 degrees. Here, imagine triangles being drawn on hyperbolic surfaces, like Pringles chips. Did you ever notice there's no Roman numeral for zero? That's right, if you try to write the Roman numerals, you'll see that there's no way to indicate an absence of something. This highlights an important part of mathematics history that zero wasn't always accepted. The Roman numeral system was an additive system. Using i's, v's, l's, and so on, it lacked a lot of the nice mathematical properties that we take for granted today. The Mobius strip is a fascinating geometric object. Take a long rectangular piece of paper, give it a twist, and attach both ends. You've just created a one-sided object. It's essentially just a continuous loop with a twist, but it has a ton of cool properties and it's a great introduction to topology. If you were to draw a line along the center of the strip, you'd eventually return to your starting point even though there's in fact only one side. It's a pretty captivating geometrical object and really kind of defies our understanding of how surfaces and geometry works. The four color theorem is a famous problem in math that states any map can be colored using only four colors. Did I mention it's in such a way that no two adjacent regions have the same color? Now it was proven in 1976, but it took a ton of time and computational power. And when I say computational, I mean computer power, and that was kind of a big deal back in the day. Given that, it was met with a lot of skepticism and criticism. But now it's universally accepted and has significantly impacted things like graph theory and combinatorics. The Towers of Hanoi is a famous puzzle made up of rods and disks. The puzzle starts with the disks in a stack in ascending order, and the objective is to move the entire stack to another rod. Only one disk can be moved at a time. Each move consists of taking the top disk from one of the stacks and placing it on another rod, no disk can be placed on top of a smaller disk. Now the beauty behind this is in its simplicity, yet its complexity. There's a nice mathematical formula for the minimum number of moves to complete the game. It's 2 to the n minus 1, where n is the number of disks. So the minimum number of moves to win with 3 disks would be 2 to the 3rd minus 1, or 7 moves. The birthday problem, or the birthday paradox, is a fascinating piece of mathematical probability theory that illustrates how bad humans are at estimating probability and statistics. Here's the question. How many people need to be in the same room such that the probability of two people having the same birthday is above 50%? Want to take a guess? Maybe you think 100, maybe a little bit more. The answer is 23. That's right, it only takes 23 people in the same room to have a greater than 50% chance that any two people have the same birthday. Which is extremely counterintuitive. 
but all you need to do is work out the combinatorics and the probability and there it is. I think what most people confuse this with is the probability that you yourself has the same birthday as someone else. That's much more unlikely. But the question's asking, do you share a birthday and does anybody else in the room share a birthday? And when you think of it like that, the odds get much higher. Time for some mispronunciation. The Banach-Tarski paradox says that if we take a solid sphere and decompose it into finite pieces, we can put the pieces back together in such a way that it creates two solid spheres of the same size. How can that be? Well, I'm not going to get into the details, but set theory and the axiom of choice prove it to be so. When I was trying to make the animation for this, it did not turn out how I wanted it to at all, but I found it too hilarious to not leave in the video, so just watch your eyes. Of course, the beautiful and famous Mandelbrot set has captivated mathematicians and math enthusiasts alike forever. One particularly fascinating aspect of the Mandelbrot set is the boundary called the seahorse tail. It's a region characterized by a series of increasingly smaller spirals and seahorse-shaped formations that extend outward from the main body of the set. Arguably the most famous fractal in the world, the Mandelbrot set has brought significant beauty and art to mathematics and inspired a ton of research. Now if you want to see something else pretty amazing, you're going to want to check out these numbers. They will totally blow your mind, I promise. 